Before I introduce my panel, I'd like to just read out something and I would request you to pay some attention to this because it will set the whole thing in context. This is a movie review from a film magazine. I'll give you the context a little later and the details. Uh, the film X is reported to have become a box office hit. This is what the reviewer writes. There is nothing in the picture to make it so. The reason must be found outside the cinemas in the crowd of idiots who see our motion pictures and for some strange reason fix up their fancy on one and keep rushing to see it several times. It is a poor picture for Mabu, who has given better directorial work in the past. The story of the picture is a patched up job and a clumsily patched up job at that. Now, you know how things change. This was what the reviewer wrote in 1947 about a film called Anmol Ghadi. When we look back at Anmol Ghadi, our memory, our nostalgia tells us that it was a classic. It starred Noor Jahan, Surendra and Suraya. It was directed by the one and only Mehboob Khan. You can't get bigger than that Mehboob Khan who made Mughal Azam, uh, who made Paki, uh, Mother India. So you can't get bigger than that. And our nostalgia tells us that this must have been a great film. The reviewer was basically saying that a bunch of idiots standing outside the cinema went over and over to see this horrible film. And that divide has always existed. But has that stopped what we would consider the public, you may call them idiots, the masses, or whatever, to go and see these films? No. And I dare say that out of 1.2 billion people, a large percentage of us belongs to that category of idiots to go and see that film over and over again because they talk to us in our language and talk to us uh, about issues, aspirations, problems, and the joys of existing in this country in a way that we understand. So we thought it would be a good idea. I thought this idea of this 100 scenes was an excellent one to mark this uh, period, this uh, occasion. We thought this would be an excellent idea to get some experts uh, on cinema, people who are engaged in either writing about it or making those films that we talk about to come and tell us about their own perceptions of what has happened over the last uh, 100 years. I have with me three very, very distinguished people. I'll introduce them quickly so that we can get on. Sriram Raghavan has made uh, several films, two of them uh, really cutting-edge films. Johnny Gaddar, I don't know how many of you have seen it. If you have not, please rent the DVD. And Agent Pinot, which I enjoyed thoroughly because it finally brought Bond to India. Um, Nikhil Advani, who made Kal Ho Na Ho, am I right? And uh, several other films, Salame Ish, but what? Nikhil, when they gave me your CV, I had to do my own research. You wrote the screenplay of Israat Ki Subhanai, which is one of the most underrated films of the last 20 years. And Kaushik Baumik, who is a PhD in uh, film and currently working for OSEAN. Uh, and Kaushik has uh, written extensively. Uh, I might also add that Kaushik writes in a non-academic style, which appeals to a lot of us. And Kaushik will provide a wider historical context. Shriyam, to start with you, you saw these 10 scenes. We don't have to stick to these 10 scenes, but I'll just pick up two or three starting points. One, song and dance is very much part of this whole thing right from the beginning. Santukaram, there is music, and the music is telling a story far beyond the words. Uh, you saw special effects. You saw... Um, stories that belong to all of us, because the whole idea of Santuka Ram or Krishna, or indeed Munna Bhai, over a hundred year span, are stories about us. These are not alien concepts and all that kind. What do you think has kept this industry going in such, you know, taking off from here, it going and growing all the while? I mean, it's a very vast question, and uh, I think it's like, uh, Whatever, whether you call us idiots or not, I mean, uh, we, we all have grown up on movies and uh, I think when you were mentioning song and dance, for example, I mean, that's one thing which is uh, 
completely unique to our movies. You know, I mean, uh, that is, I think, the one thing which binds our, I mean, uh, our, uh, if you take the right from 19, the, the very earliest script we saw till even today. And uh, I am not very, I mean, I personally don't use too many songs in my movies because I still feel, uh, I'm still a little inhibited about, uh, you know, breaking into a song and dance suddenly. So I have to find a reason. But if you take the great films, I mean, like, these are, I mean, representatives, but if you take a film like Guide, for example, and uh, if you remove the songs from the movie, the movie will actually collapse. Because uh, the songs actually are uh, doing what uh, five or six scenes would, it would require five or six scenes to, to communicate what one song can do, you know, I mean, and there are so many examples of that, which is something, I think, unique to our, uh, to our movies. I think that we are melodramatic as a, as a, uh, as a culture. Are you saying uh, excessively loud? Yeah, we are excessively melodramatic in everything. I mean, whether it is, I mean, whether it's your mom, your mother who, this is whether it's my mother who's trying to tell me that you spent your pocket money on the DVDs, supposed to be for one month, you spend it in one week. It would be melodrama. So I think that we are melodramatic as a culture, con con everything, in, in every, whether it is the policeman you're fighting with, whether it is your bai that you're talking to at home, whether it is your wife, whether, you know, we are melodramatic. So we like that, I mean, and, and, and I think that every time, I, it's only lately now that we've gotten to this whole subtle kind of cinema which is working. And, uh, but otherwise, I mean, look at Yadav Ki Bar, look at what Dharminder was doing in the science, at the science. It was fantastic. It's really superb and he's putting, if you see the shot, you have Dharminder doing that and then you have Tariq doing the same thing. You know, as a director, you would say, Are, usko mat karo hai. Usne, usne, he's done exactly that. But Nasir Sahib has said, no, you know, do it, you go for it, you know, because it, it's just, it's so fake, it looks very fake, but the song is carrying it forward, three people are, uh, I mean, so you don't care, really. So that's the wonderful thing, which again comes to what Sri Ram was saying, you get into this hall, and as long as you are taken on this ride, you don't care. You really don't care. But Kaushik, as an academic, I mean, uh, <coughs> writing about Indian popular cinema has become, if I may push the point a bit, trendy. Uh, and uh, there are researchers and academics all over the world looking at deeper meanings in uh, Indian cinema, trying to understand its dynamic. Um, They've given a kind of a, I was interested to see both of them spoke as audience members rather than filmmakers. But do you think stepping out and being an academic here for a minute, you would say, hold on a minute, I think we are fooling everybody, or do you think that there is something more going on? On the whole, the main protagonists of Hindi or popular cinema anywhere are socialized characters. There is no kind of individual hero in the Hollywood sense. And I think that's the whole point, that the emergence of... So therefore, there's a whole lot of discussion about fun, for example, and truth, you know, which is melodrama, you know? I mean, so uh, it's not that as an academic, I would miss that point, because it's a story about the emergence of the Indian public from extremely contradictory scenarios in life. You know, what's a woman's uh, duty, for example? How should a son behave or should, you know, aspiration, for example, is very big, you know. But and Divar, you know, you are, uh, now these are very real issues, uh, as much outside, out there. And the films, I think, do a wonderful job in reflecting them. I mean, they wouldn't be so popular unless, uh, and that's why I feel that Indian, uh, Hindi cinema is far more serious than Hollywood cinema. There are really core issues like fuzz, philosophical issues, which are being discussed again and again, which no Hollywood cinema would. In the 30s, um, there was uh, communal harmony. The 40s were about nationalism and all that. And the 50s really were nation building of a particular kind, whether you take even some film like Sri Chatrabis, for example, there is a nation building moral there somewhere inbuilt into it, or Piasa or something like that. Um, so do, do you feel that that somehow, maybe it has changed its flavor or execution, but that remains? No, I, I think uh, it's kind of, I mean, uh, like I think for all of us, we have a certain, I mean, a golden age, which, you know, the movies we kind of grew up on. So for me, uh, I definitely feel content-wise we are uh, much weaker today than what we were. Uh, and uh, that again sounds ironic in 100 years. For example, I mean, earlier when Kaushik was talking about the, even the 70s, I mean, there were films about, 
I mean, there will be films about uh, real people who are, uh, I mean, uh, he's from a slum or he can be a pickpocket, they can be, you know, today we don't really, those characters are gone, you know, I mean, uh, today, what are the characters we have? I mean, somewhere in the last couple of years, I feel some little bit of that is trickling back, you know, but otherwise, overall, I feel, I mean, even when I'm thinking of a story, I mean, I, it's a, it's a drawback, actually, that we are not able to, pick up stories and, I mean, there are stories all around if you look at the newspapers, you know, but uh, we don't, we're not able to somehow pick up the stories and tell compelling stories based on that. But I think that we are a little more scared than, I mean, if you look at even Yash Chopra's first film, his own, with his own banner, Dag, I mean, you have Rajesh Shana walking into the sunset at 2 women. I mean, yeah. it's a very bold theme. I mean, it's an extremely bold theme. I mean, would I, would I do it today? I mean, the actor would not agree yeah. to do it, first of all. Filmmakers like... I, I, I mean, I've done Kalona, I've done Salamish, I've done a lot of films, but f finally we are being able to do, try some, something different. I mean, five years ago, if I went and told somebody I want to make a film about a sperm donor, they would slap me. You know, today, every studio is saying, part two, likhe ka kya, wiki donor ka part two, likhe ka kya. You, you just get surprised by the kind of cinema now suddenly that, 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 that the studios are asking us to make. So it's good, it's a great time for us again, probably going back to a time where, like he said, the kind of cinema we grew up watching and we wanted to make. A lot of things, pacing, camera work, editing, change. Uh, Sri Ram and I were just discussing while watching uh, Yadav Ki Barat. That the 70s, the zoom became extremely popular. Cameras were zooming into people's faces. What are the kind of, and how has that affected storytelling? In the 70s, like, I mean, the zoom became very pop popular. But uh, you also had, I mean, you, ha you have Shole, which is, uh, there, there, there are very few zoom shots in Shole, which was made in 1970. I mean, or was making films in the 70s also, uh, where again, the technique was correct. I mean, so you, depending on the director and depending on, on how technically adept or good, I mean, Josh Chopra hated anything but the zoom. He just put the camera on the zoom and just kept shooting zoom, 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 zoom. He was known. <laughs> I remember an interview of Deep Saab, Devanand said that uh, old interview where he said that oh, in Hari Rama Hare Krishna, I discovered the zoom and I put it on and never took it off. Now, when you see Hari Rama Hare Krishna, I mean, you don't look at the, okay, is the aesthetic of a trolley or a, or a block lens uh, a better, uh, better aesthetic? Of course, maybe better for a filmmaker. For us, we would say, yeah, it can be cringe sometimes. The zoom, but the storytelling doesn't get affected at all. I mean, we see Hari Rama Krishna as a, as it was a very powerful movie when it came. You know, I mean the the. I so totally all agree with him. In the sense, you see Divar, it's probably the technically the worst film you can ever see. As a, as a director, you think, "Arey, yar, zoom se hota tha." He's just zooming in, zooming out, zooming in, zooming out. What are you doing? But after a while, you just just keep listening to Javed Sab's dialogue. You just keep looking at the screenplay, the performances, everything. Na, just vanishes out of the window. I think mean, that's the most important thing. I, I mean, all, all my ADs, I tell them, go and count the number of trolley shots in a Vijayanand song. I mean, Hoto Pairsi, but just count the number of trolley shots. I said, forget all that, see Godfather, and tell me how many trolley shots are there in Godfather. Nobody in this room will know. There are two trolley shots in Godfather. Whatever is going on at the moment, whether it is Vicky Dona, let's say, it may, it may, and the fact that, as you said, Nikhil, that ladies... <laughs> sitting in Jalandhar went and saw it, perhaps it indicates a certain impatience with older mores, say for example, or saying that, hey, this is a new idea, let's go out and have a laugh, Delhi Belly or Vicky Donor or something. So is that always indicative, do films, the film may not be about India, but the film may set off with Indian thought. Would you say that that happens? Earlier, much more. Again, like I said here, like when we were talking about, uh, we were talking about Naya Dor. Now, I think uh, Do Bega Zameen and Naya Dor were made roughly in the... Uh, same, I think there's a slight yeah, uh, gap. Yeah. Uh, 50. Four, five years. Uh, 50s, one, one yeah. Now, one is a very stark, realistic kind of uh, approach to, the, to a certain problem. The other one is celebrates, I mean, so what is the Indian village like? You know, was it like that? Oh, of course, it must have been a bit of both. But the Naya Dor village is like a happy, you know, uh, a happy village where, which has still got its drama, it's still got its. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, I don't know. Sometimes that fascinates me. But about today's movies, I think. I mean, like of course, there is a lot of. Uh, I mean, we are able to. Uh, Hindi film otherwise would normally be called. I mean, the actor would be called no surname really because it's like it's meant to appeal to everyone. Mr. Vijay, uh, Vijay or uh, Rahul, uh, you know all those. You know, but now we are actually able to go to a certain specific city and capture the ambience of that city, but in a Hindi movie. I mean, 
Okay, we still may not be able to go to Kesla and do a completely Hindi movie in Sravanjan, you know, but I don't know. But uh, like Kahani was, I mean, did capture Calcutta terrifically and the uh, gangs of Asipur and there are few But movies. those are the Hindi belt anyway, isn't it? That's what, that's what I'm saying. But even that we could, we, we never really went into places, you know, it was more or less, I mean, it's either Bombay or Delhi or kind of uh, the studio, you know. Yes, so uh, a round of question to each one of you, because I'm sure that there is, um, our audience uh, has um, a lot of questions, but a round up. We have a hundred year future, would you say? Of course, of course. I mean, uh, uh, well, why? of course, there is, we want to have a hundred year yeah. future, but do we have with technology we, changing and everything? I think so. I mean, the modes of watching may change a little bit. And uh, there'll be more, I mean, I don't know what, I mean, you can wear your glasses and the movie is already there, or something that will happen. When I was a kid, you know, uh, I actually used to, when we were watching Chitrahar, and I used to, and I was a kid at that time, and uh, I used to uh, actually wish, ki, I wish one day I could see any song I wanted whenever I wanted. You know, it's like, uh, I wish I'd asked for more, you know, so. Nikhil, where do you see, I mean, I know predictions are impossible, but still. No, I think that we are, I think it's wonderful times. I, I agree with uh, uh, Sriram, what he's saying that, you know, we never imagined that you could type, type something. I, I, Kuch Kuch Hota was in 1998, I was the associate director. We didn't have a mobile phone. We didn't have, today all my 80s have got the call sheets on iPad and you know you ask have you given the the, the, the scenes to the actor so it will go and uh, it will be it will be emailed to them. I can't believe that you know we, we didn't have any email and we didn't have anything. We, I, but we made we made films we made films that people went like like Kaushik I mean KL Cycle is something that I don't imagine. I have seen a crowd in Chandan cinema when when Salman Khan comes in, in that song in Kuch Kuch Hota Hai, pre and post interval, you can't hear the words of the song. You just can't hear it because they are just going insane. And so that kind of madness, as, as long, see that the, the, Ram, the Ram Leela and the Nautanki has continued over the ages and it will continue. We love going and spending money. Melodramatic. Melodrama, go watch it. <laughs> and so you hate it, you come back. <laughs> You'll curse it, you'll love it, you'll go back again next Friday. So it's great fun.